In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can solve real-life problems with a linear system and three variables. This type of problem might sound kind of familiar as like sort of a brain teaser thing where you would guess and check. But if we can write three equations with using three different variables, we can solve. So Jake has $2.37 in quarters, dimes, and pennies. He has three times as many dimes as pennies. He has 15 coins total. How many of each coin does he have? Our first and probably most important step is to set up what our variables are going to stand for. So if we have Q, let's use Q to stand for the number of quarters. And then we'll use D to stand for the number of dimes. And we'll use P to stand for the number of pennies. Now, do we know the value of each of those types of coins? Sure. Quarters are 25 cents, dimes are 10 cents, and pennies are 1 cent. And if we know that this is the number of each of these coins we have, we could multiply that number by the value of each of those coins to get an equation. So for quarters, it's going to be 0.25 times Q. That's how many of those we have. So just as an example, if we had three quarters, we would plug in three for Q and multiply by 0.25. That would give us the value for our quarters. We can do something similar for dimes. If we have D dimes, we take 10 cents times D. And then if we have P pennies, we take... 1 cent or 0 0.01 times p. Now this will be the value for all those coins given that we have q quarters, d dimes, and p pennies and that total is going to be two dollars and thirty seven cents. Okay now it says he has three times as many dimes as pennies. That one can be a little bit of a brain bender sometimes. Let's just say as an example he has two pennies. Okay, so if he has two pennies, that means he has three times as many dimes. Okay, so two times three would be six, so that means he has six dimes. For my equation, I'm going to use the D and the P, and so if I have P and D here, well, if I have two of the pennies, and we said that three times that would be six. How do I make these so that they're equal to each other? Well, I have to multiply the pennies by three. So three times the number of pennies will give me the number of dimes. And like my example there where we had two pennies, and that then tells us we have six dimes. Okay, one more piece of information here we have. It says he has 15 total coins. So that's just taking the number of each type of coin, in this case Q plus P plus D, and I apologize for that. My computer is being goofy here. Let's get that out of there. All right. So if we have Q quarters and D dimes, and P pennies, that would be Q plus D plus P equals our total number, which is 15. Okay, so now we have three equations, and we've got three different variables going here, but notice this one. This one has just two variables, and it's already solved for D. So if I take 3P and put it into both of my equations for D, then I'm going to have two equations with two variables, and I'll be able to solve that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to change colors here quick to get something to kind of keep things straight as we do this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the 3P, we're going to put it into this equation for D, because then I'll just have Q and P there. So this becomes 0.25 times Q plus... 0.10 times D, but we know D is the same as 3P, then we have 0.01 times P equals 237. Okay, now 
we can clean this up a little bit and we have 0.25 Q plus 10 cents times 3 would be 30 cents or you could think of it as 0.3 like that plus 0 0.01 times P equals 237 okay now combine those like terms and finally we have 25 or 0.25 Q plus 0.31 31 cents P be careful there equals 2.37 okay so there's one equation that I'm gonna have that I'm gonna come back to this one has just Q's and P's in it we could do a similar thing right here with this equation and put in that 3P where we see the D so let's do that so we have Q plus D but we know D is equivalent to 3P so we're gonna say plus 3P and then plus P equals 15 okay combine like terms we have Q plus 4P equals 15 now I can solve this equation for Q and then that will allow me to plug that into this equation and all I'll have left will be P's and I'll be able to solve that so let's try that we have minus 4p here I'm gonna just again change colors quick so we can try and keep all this stuff straight so we take the uh, 4p and we're gonna take that over to the other side here so that we solve this equation for Q and so then we know that Q is equal to 15 minus 4 P okay so then we can take this because we know Q is equal to that and drop it into this equation and all we have then is the P's in our equation so let's go ahead and do that so we have 0.25 times 15 and we got to put it in parentheses here don't forget that minus 4p because we're replacing this where the q was so then plus 0.31p equals 2.37 okay we're gonna have to distribute that through there so let's go ahead and do that 0.25 times 15 that'll be 3.75 and then 0.25 times minus 4p will be minus p or minus 1p however you want to do that I'll throw a 1 there just to be safe and then plus 0.31p equals 237 okay combine like terms now so that's gonna give us 3.75 minus 0.69p equals 2.37 okay we're making our way then we want to get that P by itself look at that we've got one equation with one variable and we can solve that for P so minus 3.75 minus 3.75 and that gives us negative 0.69 P equals negative 1 point three eight and again I apologize I'm just getting used to this new program here oopsie holy crazy stuff okay um, so then let's just make sure this is in here where it should be try this again alright there we go okay so then negative one point three eight we get there divide by the negative 0 0.69 and we get P is 2 okay so that means there's two pennies now we also know that oh goodness sakes that's late I can't redo this again <laughs> this is gonna be what it is I'm sorry all right, so here we are. Um, 
we then we know what p is so let's go ahead and go back and find another equation that has p and one other variable because we'll be able to plug in and get what exactly that is so p is 2 and then I'm gonna find another equation and look at this right over here I've got this equation which has p in it so I can plug in and get what q is so if I plug in 2 for p it's gonna be q equals 15 minus 4 times 2 so then we have 15 minus 8 and that's going to give us 7. So that means Q is 7. So there's 7 quarters. And I don't know why it does that. That's really making me crazy. We have 7 quarters. And then, finally, we can figure out. We know there's a total of 15 coins. And if I've got 7 quarters and 2 pennies, that's 9. How many coins are left? There must be 6 dimes. So then we have 8 and 7, 15 total coins. If you want, you could take those numbers back in, plug them in here, make sure they add up to the right amount. And look at this. Holy cow, I just pulled 2 out of the air, and that is the number of pennies. So solving these real-life situations, first of all, set up what your variables are going to stand for. Then use those variables and the information that you're given to set up some equations um, and oftentimes they're actually pretty straightforward and not crazy complicated things just using the information we're given and then be on the lookout for things like this where you have a variable already solved for we can then plug that into our other equations and remember if we have three equations or three variables excuse me we need three equations if we have two variables we need two equations so that got us to this point right here where we had this one and this one and we just had Q's and P's so we said hey let's solve for Q pop that into our other equation now we have one equation with one variable which we were able to solve for and then we could start working back I hope this video was helpful I apologize for the crazy rotation stuff but uh, hopefully I got the point across. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.